Hey guys, it's Mr. Adams here, and like I said, we're going to go over a oh, excuse me a math formula here on uh, how to calculate the line length of a common rafter with the plan. So, um, common rafters are the easiest type of rafter typically to lay out, and we're we are uh, going to use our common rafter on a gable roof, like we talked about in the PowerPoint pre presentation. So, this is the main rafter that's used in in, in constructing a gable roof. So. Um, when we're talking about a gable roof, we're talking about a roof that looks like this, okay? Just like so. It's a gable end, or this is the, what we refer to as the gable end of the roof. Um, if we look at our building here, we have a few things that we have to concern ourselves with. If we look at the outside, from the outside of our building to the outside of the building, we refer to that as span of the building, the span of the building. Um, I don't have it written down, but because I didn't want to confuse anybody, but if we talked about half this distance, we would be talking about the total run of the building. For this math formula that we're gonna to use today, we're just gonna to refer to span as the plan, okay? So we're gonna talk about half of the span of the building is basically, what we're looking to do is find the middle of our building as the plan. And once we know the middle of the building, we can calculate the length of these rafters utilizing, uh, today we're gonna to utilize, there's a couple of different ways of doing it, but today we're gonna to utilize the framing square. And when we're using our framing square, we're going to be careful to use it in a way so we're reading the right side of the square here, all right? So, um, or what we refer to as the face of the square. This side of the square, this framing square, is 16 inches long. This is referred to as the tongue of the square. This side is the blade of the square. When I hold my framing square, I always hold the tongue in my right hand and the blade in the left hand so that I can read the face of the square. If you look here closely, there's all kinds of numbers on this framing square that we're gonna learn how to use in class here. The numbers on the other side of the framing square are completely different. So we wanna make sure that we're utilizing the right side of the square as the plan, all right? So for this, for this lesson, all we need to know at this point is this is the tongue, this is the blade. How I remember that, that is the tongue is tiny. It starts with a T. The blade is big, it starts with a B. So tongue and blade is how I remember it. I mean, do whatever you want, but that's a good mnemonic device to try to remember that. So the tongue and the blade of the square. All right, so now if we understand that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this square to calculate the line length of a common rafter. And the formula for this is one half of the span of the roof, okay? If we look up here at our formula, it's one half the span. Well, we've already talked about the span is 20 feet. And then we're gonna take, once we know the half of the span, we're gonna multiply it by the length of rafter per foot of run, all right? Now, in order to do that, we need to get a few details of our blueprint. Um, if we go to our blueprint or our plan of our draw, or whatever we're about to build, there's something on there called the unit rise, all right? And if we look at the unit rise of a roof over here, I've written it down in this tiny triangle. You might have to zoom in a little, Zach. Um, we're talking about for every foot across this building, how high does the roof go up, okay? How tall does the roof go up? So if I come over here 12 inches, how many inches up does it go? The higher the number, the steeper it is. We refer to this as the unit rise, all right? In this particular case, we're going over a foot and up eight inches, over a foot, up eight inches, over a foot, up eight inches, over a foot, up eight inches, like so, like that, okay? That's how we come up. Now we got this number off the, off the blueprint. It's an eight inch unit rise. The unit rise can be anything. It can be four inches, five inches, six inches, seven inches. The higher the number, the steeper the roof gets, okay? We always talk about the unit run on a common rafter anyway, as 12. We always refer to it as it's 12 inches over and then whatever number up, that changes sometimes, okay? So for every foot across, how many inches up does the roof travel, all right, is, is what we're, we're referring to. So how we find that information is, I've written it down here, but we need to calculate the hypotenuse of this little triangle, all right? So for every eight inches up and every foot over, what is the travel of the rafter? Um, well, in this particular case, it's 14.42 inches. Now, luckily for me, I didn't have to do that math, but if I did, I could plug it into A squared plus B squared equals C squared and run myself through that like you've learned in math class. Or, luckily for me, the construction industry has already calculated that for me. And how I figure that out is, 
If I look at the, if I hold the tongue and the blade of my square right, and I look over here at the number eight on my framing square, and I look underneath the first line there, it says 14.42, all right? Same as there, 14.42. And if my finger travels over here, like so, it says length common raptor per foot of run. They've established this all for me. So someone years ago decided to do all the math for you. So you go eight inch unit rise, I go over the number eight, I drop down one, 14.42. That's the number I need for my formula, okay? If it was a seven inch unit rise, I would drop down, it would be 13.8.89. If it was a six, it would be 13.42. So it's really simple. I travel over to the number I'm looking for. I go to the first line, 14.42. So let's plug this into our formula. All right, we have one half the span times the length of raptor per foot of run. All right, so it's one half times 20, which is our span, times 14.42, which is the number that we got off the framing square under the num underneath the number eight, okay? So now it's just a matter of doing simple math. One half times 20 is 10, right? 20 divided by two is 10, all right? That's the middle of our building, okay? We're finding the middle of our building so that we can calculate the length of this raptor times 14.42. Well, 10 times 14.42 is 144.2 inches. That is the length of our raptor from the outside of the house the whole way up here to the center of our building. That's what we refer to as the line length of our raptor. It's 144.2 inches. It's that simple. It's not that complicated. The most complicated thing at this point is taking 0.2 inches and converting it into a fraction so that we can read it on our tape measure. So how I do that is I come over here and since we work in sixteenths of an inch, I take 0.2, I multiply it by 16, I get 3.2, I take the number to the left of the decimal and I put it over 16, three over 16. My answer is 144 and 3 16 inches, all right? So that's the first lesson here in how to calculate the length. All we need to know at this point, we're gonna learn how to lay the rafters out, but at this point, all we need to know as how long is the rafter going to be? And again, we use the formula, one half the span times the length of rafter per foot of run to calculate what we refer to as the line length of the rafter. And that's the distance from the center of the ridge board all the way down to the plumb cut, we'll refer to the plumb cut of the bird's mouth. This is what we refer to as the line length of the rafter there, guys. So. Um, that's step one. Hopefully this helps recording this and um, we'll have some math problems to do in Canvas to work on this. But uh, for now, that's the video, all right? Have a